Stage 11 is a 166 kilometer flat stage. So, looks like the yellow jersey will be with us for one more day. Which, I don't really see it staying for much longer after that one day. Um, as you see the route left. Some big climbs, but we could keep it on this stage, but I don't know if I want to. The time trial is definitely going to be challenging. Uh, up the Col de Tourmalet in stage 14. That's a short stage, quick, and a really, really steep climb at the end. There's a bunch of cat ones here. It's a flat stage, but there's going to be crosswinds. Uh, a hilly stage, which that we should win. A lot of HCs, more HCs. That's a, a lot of tough stages in, into the shops, which we will do the whole stage on the Champs Elysees. So here we go, stage 11. Last time we got our win stolen by the breakaway who just got out there enough. They won by about 11 seconds. Oliver Nason was the winner. So there's the three favorites. It's us, Peter Sagan, Ilya Viviani, and Dylan Grunewagen. So those are the three guys to look out for. When I made the uh, editing before this series, I did give um, accurate ratings to people's form in the Tour de France, which I will absolutely give credit to uh, Wout Van Aert, who won stage 10. And I was very surprised to see him sprint as well as Wout Van Aert did. There's number 112 right there. That is Primoz Roglic, a big overall threat. Dylan Grunewagen wearing the green jersey as we are still holding on to yellow here in stage 11. Garcia Cortina going out in the breakaway. Greg Van Aver, Mark going out again. Niels Paulet all going out in the early breakaway today. Michael Valgren wants to go out too. Benoit Kosnefroy from AG2R. Uh, Xander Murisi. Meyer from Mitchell and Scott. So a decent amount of breakaway riders today. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised to see Serge Powell's are going out. Not that. Well, Serge Powell's was a big breakaway rider when he was on Dimension Data in the last Tour de France. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Mark Cavendish go out in the breakaway. He's not going to really win in a bunch sprint, and he's here. So what if we see Mark Cavendish in the break? That would definitely be interesting. I'm not sure why we're riding so hard. Excuse me. Uh, not really an overall threat out there. But I guess we don't like Serge Powell's being in the break, or maybe it's too many. Tony Martin. Postal Burger Scotchman. I guess they're all doing something. I'm not really sure what's totally happening, but it's fine. Scotchman should not be able to be out there. He's only five minutes back in the overall standings. Um, okay, stop. Not even sure what's happening. They're going to get back. Good. Alright, so the breakaway consists of six riders today. Xander Muracy is maybe in trouble. Oliver Nason, yesterday's winner, tried to make a go at it, and that did not work for him. It was very, very close. Uh, sprinters actually were not really involved because I was the only one that actually sprinted. What the fuck are you doing, Sagan? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to swear in this series. <laughs> Oops. I just have no idea why he would do that. I might have been the dumbest thing he's ever done. Um, but no. Um, none of the sprinters really partook in yesterday's sprint because they were 11 seconds ahead, so it was pretty unrealistic for us to be able to catch them, or it went down to 11 seconds once I completed my sprint. And I got closer to Nason and Van Avermark, but it uh, did not work, so most of the sprinters did not participate, which is disappointing because, you know, those sprint stages are always a lot of fun. So here we are doing a fun little descent here. 
These are probably my favorite things to do in the game. They're just fun. Can be challenging. And there is our lead out man, Daniel Oss. And their overall contender, Emmanuel Buckman. Now, for those that don't know what the Tour de France is or why Peter Sagan is in yellow jersey, and I'm not calling him the overall contender, well, Peter Sagan will not be able to keep it up in the high mountains. He got up La Planche de Belfi well, but at this point in the race, he's not going to be able to get up the mountains. And that's just the truth. So. We don't, this yellow jersey will probably be off to God tomorrow, honestly, or maybe not tomorrow, but it, we'll see what happens. There's a little bit of a break off here, and I'm just going to make sure that that is nothing. Looks like the descent really split people up, actually, into a group. Oh, jeez. I just went right through Garrett Thomas. <laughs> All right, let's move forward. Who's off the back already today? Oh, somebody was off the back. Not anymore, though. Yeah, nobody's off the back. So the five-man breakaway all the way out front. Uh, Murisi is uh, about two minutes behind them. Did not get up to him early on, so he'll be back with us soon. Off the category four climb, Valgren gets the points, um, which is actually kind of surprising. I would think Van Avermaet would be going for it because he's got a decent amount of those points. Van Avermaet's sixth and seventh is Valgren, so Valgren might be going for it as well, trying to catch us, who are our rider Patrick Conrad, the Austrian national champion, who is remaining in the polka dot jersey. So the breakaway is about two minutes ahead, and I can think the, the blue team right there, Dakunik Quickstep, is definitely not going to let it slide today where the breakaway gets away from the peloton. You know, honestly, I kind of miss the takeoff team when Peter Sagan was on there because they always had some of the coolest uh, jerseys and stuff. I always liked the colors. Boar is kind of... Our poor is not bad, but it's not as, like, exciting. I miss those tank off jerseys, though. And riding with Sagan and Contador. That was, like, a dream team for me in the Tour de France games. I did very, very well with those two. I ended up with the yellow jersey and the green pretty much every, uh, every season. And then I'd have, uh, Raphael, Mike, or Roman Kruziger go for the, uh, the polka dot. It, Michael Valgren actually who's out in the breakaway right now was on that team which is cool never really utilized him very much I only really used four riders that was Sagan, Contador, Kruziger and Rafael Micah who uh, is on Bora but we're not he's not in the Tour de France lineup so we have no need for Rafael in this one who knows, my pro team series, we could see Raphael Micah uh, participate in that. We're, we'll see where it goes. That's not really been uploaded yet, but that will be soon. I'm not sure it's going to come out first. Uh, this one, this video or the pro team video. Um, but I'm definitely excited to do the pro team series. Or is there going to be a sprint here, or am I just going to be able to leisurely get these 10 points? I kind of like where this is going. Doesn't look like anybody's going to go for it against me. So if we pick up 10 easy points. I think they pretty much know the green jersey is in the bag. So you have 352 points. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so much more than everybody else. Second, of course, Dylan Grunewagen because he uh, he won a stage not too long ago. It's actually a good day for us to get another stage win. Peter Sagan is on form. 
on good form actually as good as it can be so today definitely could be the day for another stage win but I'd watch out for Viviani and uh, Ewan and Grunewagen and who knows even though he's not in the real tour Gaviria is in this one so Gaviria could be up there and I've all and Sunny Cold Rally always kind of just shows up so the last 20 K's gonna be riding with Peter Sagan so here we go one climb left it's a cat four and I'm interested to see if any sprinters might get dropped off on this climb and Sepp Van Mark kind of cuts us off one of Sepp Van Mark is a, one of the classics riders I believe he won Perry Roubaix in the past which was only for the best of cobblestone riders there is Val Van Art who won stage 9 10 in the real Tour de France stage 9 was won by Daryl Impey the rider from Mitchelton Scott so the breakaway still got a minute advantage they just did the KOM sprint Greg Van Avermark gets one point so I think Van Avermark could be having to shout at the uh, polka dot jersey but we do not know he's got held up by the Dakunic rider and oh my god these guys need to ride uh, I do not want to let the breakaway get another stage from under my nose I honestly will do it myself again. I'm heading out front to see what kind of damage I can do. Not really very much. I guess the breakaway still got life. I'm not going to do that really for much more than I have to. It's tight in the peloton. So Daniel lost on good form tempo as high as you can get get up there and and go because the breakaway is in good shape here about a minute ahead of 13 K's left and they could easily win again so Greg Van Avermark is could have another shot at the stage which he pretty much should have had yesterday but I guess Oliver Nason got the better of him modern buildings here I can definitely tell they put more uh, effort into the architecture that surrounds these places in the Tour de France game this year. Definitely seen some architecture that I have not seen in past games, which is very, very cool. So we're going to do tempo at the front of the peloton here because no one else will, and I'm not going to let the breakaway get away again. So annoying how they got away in the last stage. And they could easily get away again. So, it's down about 108. I'm doing all I can out front here, though. Because the gap really was not changing when Wilhelm Van Aert and Eve Lampers were out front. Oh, there's Daniel Oss, so our teammate. We are going to slot in behind him. God, I don't like these stupid tutorials. I know what I'm doing. I've been playing this game for a while. Oh, whoa, full saying. Quintana and Pino are attacking. Those are overall contenders. Tom Dumoulin is following them. So the overall contenders are attacking on the flat here. That's a four rider group. Yaka full saying. Nairo Quintana, Thibaut Pino, Tom Dumoulin. All decently placed in the overall standings. Tom Dumoulin is the closest to the yellow jersey which is me <laughs> that was the cringiest thing ever so the breakaway is pretty much caught and so is this four rider group with the uh, the overall contenders oh don't stop don't stop they're gonna get away what are we doing come on come on Eve Lampere go you have to Peloton is whittling down down about 144 riders, 54 seconds behind the lead group. Valgren, Paulet, Greg Van Avermart. Eve Lampere is putting in the work at the front of the peloton. Down about 46 seconds now, 45. The de Kooning team is definitely upping the pace. They see this as a threat. They want to take a stage. They have not had one yet because I've stolen them from their sprinter and their puncher, Alaphilippe. 
who has done an incredible job in the real Tour de France this year, and their sprinter Ilya Viviani, who is very, very fast. Pino is attacking. Quintana, Dan Martin on the attack. John Degenkolb is falling off the group. So those overall guys are throwing in an attack. Roberto Uran is going to follow. Tom Dumoulin, all trying to follow. And while these overall contenders are attacking, the breakaway is being caught. They're about 800 meters away from the finish line right now. The sprint is on for the win here. Fernando Gaviria is there. Me. There's Ilya Viviani. They're 200 meters away. Will they be able to win? The breakaway sneaks another one. Michael Valgren will win stage 11 in the Tour de France. And yet again, the sprinters' teams fail to chase down the breakaway. That's just annoying. We did what we could. Viviani was there, Gaviria, Michael Matthews was there. Which is not good enough. These are easy sprint stages that the team should be able to get, and we have not been getting. So Michael Valgren, who's been... Ladies and gentlemen, oh my god, that was so weird. Screen. So Michael Valgren, who has been in the breakaway a lot, has finally won a stage. but for now he can relish the moment he is in sparkling form and you can clap him loudly here's the green jersey of this tour de force Petr Sagan let's hope for his sake that things go as well in the future but for now he can relish the moment we can say that everything is going well for him at the moment. Here's the polka dot jersey of this Tour de France. Patrick Conrad there. He will be able to hang this jersey in his trophy room. Let's hope for him that he can add more. We can say that everything is going well for him at the moment. Here's the white jersey of this Tour de France. Max. I didn't think they were going to have his name. Wow. He will be able to hang this jersey in his trophy room. Let's hope for him that he can add more. Well, those are the podiums. I guess we got the announcer back. We had him last time. I tried to turn him off, but I guess he just likes to talk. <laughs> Those are the stage results. Greg Van Avermark comes up short yet again. That was not Michael Matthews. That was Soren Craig Anderson that gave a sprint at us. Wow. Impressive from him. And uh, that'll be it for this stage. Still, uh, everything pretty much stays the same. So thank you for watching and goodbye.